I think people buy into this Northeast exceptionalism. These things still go on here. It's not just the South, it's happening here. The clan of then are the proud boys of today. The fire hoses of then are the mailboxes on fire today. It's in a different form, but it's still happening. What is our response? The power of the people and the power of the movement. So far as I'm concerned, in this moment, when you cast a ballot, it is the resistance of cruelty and corruption, and it is an affirmation of justice in every form. It is an affirmation of the healthcare justice, the climate justice, the racial justice, the economic justice, the housing justice that we seek to make real, and we will know that we will have in compassionate, committed partners in Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who we will hold accountable. Accountability. There are other elected officials here. We want that. We welcome that. That is not what we've had for the last four years. Now, finally, I wanted to share a story with all of you because we are one human family. In my district this week, I learned of a family where the mother wasn't feeling well. This is an immigrant family in my district. Single female-headed household, raising two children. She went to the hospital. Shortly thereafter was diagnosed with coronavirus and put on an intubator. She had left her 11-year-old and nine-month-old saying, I will be right back. For two weeks, that 11-year-old cared for her nine-month-old little sister, scared, hungry, afraid, and alone. She had run out of food. She had run out of diapers. Her little sister was in a towel with safety tape. Thankfully, because a neighbor paid close attention, and I've been so inspired by the community, the collective care and the mutual aid that has emerged in the midst of this pandemic, was paying attention and was able to connect this 11-year-old little girl with the services that she needed. I wish that I could tell you that that story that that devastating lived experience, that she is an anomaly, but she is not. That is Donald Trump's America. An 11 year old immigrant little girl caring for a nine month old while her mother is fighting for her life and too afraid to reach out and ask for help. That is Donald Trump's America. And we are one human family, and that cannot stand. So this is personal. It should feel that way for each and every one of us. And I know that because you're all seasoned organizers, every cycle we say, this is the most consequential. The truth is every election has consequences. And we have experienced that a tsunami of hurt the last four years because elections do have consequences. But this time is different. This is the most consequential election, not just in our lifetime, but in our history. So these are unprecedented times. And what they demand and require of all of us in this moment is unprecedented organizing and unprecedented mobilizing and unprecedented voting so we can get to some unprecedented legislating because policy is my love language. <laughs> 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 
And then what it is also required of all of us is that thing which can be the hardest to practice. And it is not a feeling, it is a practice, it is a discipline. And that is unprecedented hope, which is what each and every one of you in this movement gives me. I am counting on you. That little 11 year old immigrant girl is counting on all of us. And I have unprecedented hope that we will meet the moment. So in these next five days, we are going to dig deep because our very democracy, our livelihood, and our lives are all on the ballot. And we need to vote like it. So thank you all.